After Effects tutorial. Go ahead and start by bringing our logo into our composition. Double click here on the left in this empty area. Find your logo on your computer. Once you've got that imported, let's go ahead and bring it down into our composition. Now let's resize it to fit about this general size here. First, what we're going to do is actually just only do the scaling of the logo. So with your logo highlighted, press S for scale. Click the stopwatch next to scale. Now let's bring it to a little bit before one second here. And let's scale it down. Okay, this is your logo backing up, getting ready to hit. And then bring it to one second. And let's scale it up bigger than we had it originally. So about right there. Once you've got your logo this big, this is how big it's going to be when it's hitting the glass. Make sure you remember what number that is. That way, every time we bring it back and it hits the glass again, we can go that exact same number on scale. So it looks like it's hitting the same barrier every time. So mine says 40.3 right now. I'm just going to go ahead and round that to a 40. What we're going to do is take this middle keyframe here and press F9 to smooth it out. So when it comes back, it slowly changes direction before it comes up, like a wind-up. Bam, it's hitting you. Cool. So after it hits, it's going to bounce off that glass for a little bit more than half a second. So let's go forward here. Bounced off backwards. So we're going to go ahead and scale it down just a little bit. Maybe that much. So as you can see, boom, it hit the glass, it comes back. After it hits the glass and bounces backwards, it's going to sit still for a little while to gain its composure. So let's go ahead to two seconds about. And what you want to do is click right here to create another keyframe with the same information we have there. So between here and here, it stays the same. Now our logo's mad, but he's going to try again. So let's go back, let's go even further. Let's go a whole second this time and bring our scale down. About the same as we did last time. And then once again, let's go about a little bit further closer and let's bring it to the glass. It's come back and hitting the glass. Remember I made mine 40%. 40% boom. And now it looks just as close as it did last time when it came up to hit the glass. So boom, it hits the glass. It's going to bounce off and bounce backwards a little bit. So let's bring the scale down just a little bit, maybe that much. Okay, remember it's going to back up, regain its composure for a couple seconds. So let's move about this far forward and press this to add a keyframe. So it's going to be sitting still between then. So let's go a little bit further this time. It's a longer wind up. And bring it down real small. Not super small, but further than it did before. It's really getting a running start here. 10%. And it's going to come flying and hit in the front. Let's go about this far here. Remember, where you put your glass, mine's at 40%. Also, don't forget, let's F9 this keyframe here as well to make it a smooth transition when it changes direction on its way back. Do the same thing here. Let's make this a smooth transition. And it's coming forward and this time it hits the glass right there it actually hits it and it breaks through but the glass slows it down so from here on throughout the rest of the composition it's going to slowly come towards us let's go to like nine seconds and turn the scale up just maybe that much so let's check it out right now hit the glass hit the glass third try really get it boom hit the glass made it through and it's creeping towards us nice so that's it for the scaling. It's really easy. Now we're going to add some shakes to it and give some other dimensions to it to really make it look like our logo is putting in an actual human effort. So let's go ahead and make our logo 3D by clicking here. We're going to have it start leaning forward like it's really putting its head into the charge. Go ahead and drop this down again so we get all of our rotations here. So we don't want to start it out leaning forward. Okay, so let's go a little bit ahead and go ahead and click on the X rotation stopwatch. And from here, it'll start going forward. Let's go ahead and bring this all the way to where our logo backs up the most and let's lean our guy forward. Like that. Nice, so it's coming at us leaning forward, but we're actually going to make it do is stand back straight up right before it hits our glass. That way we can see our logo each time it's hitting. So let's go right here to where we hit the glass and let's go back to zero on our X rotation. Now let's go ahead and make all three of these keyframes smooth by highlighting them and pressing F9. So let's see what we got here. Boom. Okay, so that's our logo coming in hitting. Let's do that and match the rest of our scaling. It's going to stay straight up while it comes back, while it rests. And then right here, let's add another keyframe. And while it's backing up, it's going to lean itself forward. And then when it hits, it's 
going to go back to zero. It's going to sit still while it's resting. Here comes its wind up. This is the main one where it gets really serious, so maybe I'll rotate it more. Create a keyframe here, and let's go all the way to here, and let's make him lean down a lot. Next, go ahead and go back to the video that you're currently watching right now. Go ahead and click on the like button, and then you want to click on the subscribe button. Now, once you've done that, scroll down and go ahead and add a cool comment. This is the coolest video I have ever seen in my entire life of living on this planet we call Earth. Something like that. Go ahead and click on comment. Okay, and then he's going to come up for the final hit. Bam, in your face. Let's bring that back to zero. And then it's going to stay straight up the rest of the time because it already broke through the glass. Mission accomplished. So now we're going to add some shakes. When it hits that glass, it's going to get dazed, like whoa. So to do this, we're going to use our Z rotation. So let's go to right where it hits. Let's hit the stopwatch on Z rotation. Only go like two frames forward and let's rotate it to the side. Now only a couple frames forward again. Rotate it to the other side. And the shake is eventually going to wear down. So this time let's go a little bit further and go the other side, not as far down though. Go further again. Bring it back. And let's go even further and bring it back to zero. Let's see how that looks. As you can see, it hit and it wobbles. That wobble takes a little too long. So let's actually compress this, make it happen a little faster. Here's a cool way to do this. Highlight all of these that we just did. Press on Alt on your keyboard and click this last one and pull it in. So it's kind of compressing these frames. Now let's check it out. Yeah, it hit. It got shooken up. Cool, let's go ahead and do this for the next collision. And you know what? It's easy as highlighting these, pressing Control-C to copy them. Make sure we lined up where we hit it the glass next time. And hit Control-V. So here's what we got going. Now let's give our composition a little bit of depth. So to do this, we're gonna create a simple background using a gradient ramp. That'll just help this composition look a lot better once that glass breaks. So let's go ahead and right click here, get a new solid. Let's name it background, click OK. With that solid selected, let's go ahead and go to effects and presets and type in gradient ramp and then double click here on gradient ramp. Let's go ahead and put our logo on top of that background so we can see what's going on. Let's go back to our solid and for this ramp shape, let's change that to a radial ramp and let's bring the center of that radial gradient down to the center of our composition. Now let's make it darker on the outside and lighter on the inside. So start color, we'll go ahead and make that light. A somewhat darker gray, like that color gray and the end color, let's make that a bit darker. Nice, now what we wanna do is make the end of ramp, let's pull that this way to make the gradient larger and this will be the background for our animation. Now it's time to add our glass. Let's go ahead and go to right here, right click, new, solid again. Let's name this glass 01. We'll make this a bright white. Click on OK and click on OK. Nice, time for another solid. Right click new, solid. Just name this glass 02. Let's make it a bit darker. Like that'll be OK, click on OK, click on OK. Now with this solid here highlighted, okay, go up here to your shape tool. If you need to, hold and click on it and go to the ellipse tool. And once the ellipse tool is the standard default one right here that is selected, double click on that. And that just turned this darker solid into an oval that fills our entire composition. It actually turned it into a mask. And what that means is that we can feather it. So right here where it says mask, with that highlighted, go ahead and press F. Let's turn that up just a little bit, maybe 20. Okay, let's go ahead and take glass 02, glass 01, highlight both of them and pre-compose these. You can just call it glass comp. Click on OK. Now we're going to stretch this thing really, really big. Go ahead and zoom out so you can see your whole composition. And let's just take this thing and scale it way up, way up. Now let's move it to the corner because we want this just to have a curve that goes around the middle of our screen. See that? Kind of like a glare for glass. Pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and bring ourselves back up to fit up to 100%. The last step is to actually put this glass comp on top of our logo. Our logo is behind that glass. Let's go ahead and click on the glass comp, press T for opacity, and let's turn that down. So you can see through it and see our logo. 
Nice, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick mine at 40%, okay? So right now it's kind of hard to see the logo, but that's the point, because in the end when it breaks through, it's gonna be crispy and clear. Now let's make this glass shake whenever your logo hits the glass. Let's go ahead and go into our glass comp, and let's go to R for rotation. Now let's go to our your logo here. Press on U to see the keyframes that we just made. Okay, so now we know exactly where the logo's hitting. So right when it hits, we're actually going to rotate this glass. So go ahead and click on a stopwatch here. Now let's go forward two frames, okay? And let's make this rotation go up by one degree. Okay, just hit one right there. It'll move it up a little bit. And then two frames again, and let's bring it back to zero. And now let's go two frames in, and let's go to negative one, make it spin the other way by one degree. And then finally, two more frames, and let's bring it back to zero. That'll make the glass shake back and forth really quickly after it gets hit. All right, let's see it in real time. Nice. All right, so we'll go ahead and copy all of these, highlight them all, control C, and let's bring it to the next spot where our logo crashes the glass. Boom, right here, go ahead and hit control V. Now this final hit, our glass isn't shaking, it's gonna shatter. So what we're gonna actually do is go right here to the point this is where our logo is hitting the glass because that's when it starts to slow down. It broke through right here. And let's end this glass composition. Bring it right here. Bring this whole comp down right here. So when it hits that glass, it disappears. Let's go over one more. They can overlap. Great. Now we're actually going to duplicate this glass comp layer. Control D. Let's go ahead and go to its opacity. Press T. Let's turn that 100% up. Now we're gonna pre-compose this again. Go ahead and right click on it, click pre-compose. Let's name it Shatter. Make sure you select move all attributes into the new composition. Click on OK. Now with this comp highlighted, let's go to our effects and presets and actually type in Shatter. And let's double click on that effect. So now as you can see, we have this new comp we created shattering. Okay, let's go ahead and play with some of the details, some of the settings to get it to look right. First view. Let's change that to rendered. Let's open up shape here. Pattern, easy, let's bring it down to glass. Repetitions, let's bring that up to 24. Direction, keep at zero and zero. Keep the origin the same and extrusion depth, let's take that down to 0.05. So they're not thick pieces. Now let's see how that looks. Scroll through here and bam, we got our glass shattering, nice. Let's go ahead and take this composition here that we just created and added the shatter effect too and let's bring it all the way to the end to right where we stopped our other composition boom right there you got your logo flying in and the glass comp on top of it shattering let's look at it in real time nice that's pretty cool it is time to add some cracking to this glass to give it the final cool effect other than the sound effects which also go along with it very well. So let's go ahead and collapse all of these. Right click new, solid. You can name it crack. Color, I'll make it black for now. Click on OK, then click on OK. Now this might confuse you, but you'll see it works. So what actually going to do right now is go ahead and click on that crack. And then right here in effects and presets, let's go to advanced lightning and double click on advanced lightning let's go ahead and hit on our logo here and press u to make sure we line up exactly with that keyframe now let's go back to that crack and let's go to origin here and click on this target here next to it and bring the origin of your lightning bolt to the center all right so let's change some of the settings of our crack let's really dig deep inside of this crack so for lightning type let's go ahead and change that from direction to anywhere. All right, we're also gonna play with some of the settings of the core of your crack. So go ahead and click here to open up the core of your crack. Let's go ahead and change the core color. Black, okay, click on okay. Now let's go to the glow settings and glow radius. Go ahead and make that a one. Glow opacity, zero, we don't need it. All right, we're also gonna mess with the forking. So let's go to the forking settings of your crack. Okay, that makes it fork more. Yeah, we're gonna be forking your crack at 56.8% here. And then the decay setting will actually kind of bring things back or forward. We wanna start really simple, so I'm gonna bring it forward to make it look like just a simple crack right there. 
And once you get it like this, you can actually go through the conductivity state and look at different options for your first crack here. And along with that, you can also go to the expert settings and go to complexity. So I'm bringing that to four. And let's go ahead and go through our conductivity state here. And let's find one that looks pretty crack-like. I like that one. Now we're not gonna click on any of these stopwatches right now because we want the crack to stay still. But we are gonna add more cracks. So let's go ahead and duplicate this crack layer. Control D. Let's do five cracks. Let's go ahead and take this top one, conductivity state, and move it to where it's somewhere like that. Let's go to the next one. Try to spread these out in a circle. Now remember, you, you can play with some of the settings like the forking. So here I turned up the forking a little bit. Let's go check out this next one. Conductivity state, move it around. Let's get one going the other way. Sometimes also what I would do is go to my core of my crack and turn down the radius of that core. So maybe that one's not as thick as the other ones. And let's go to the next one and find a cool place for it. Okay, so we got it coming up. Boom. So right when it hits, let's go ahead and take all of these and just move them forward so they don't pop up until right when that hits. So let's check it out. There, you got your first crack. Now let's go ahead and jump forward to the next part where our logo hits our glass. Bring the cursor forward, and bam, right there it hits that glass. Let's go one frame before that and create a stopwatch on outer radius and forking. And I'm gonna do that for all five. All right, now let's go one frame forward so we are right at the moment of impact, and then we're gonna play with some of these settings to make these cracks get bigger and expand. First off, change the outer radius to bring any one of your cracks out further. And after you have brought that out, you can actually play with the forking, turn it up more if you want more cracks to come out of there. So feel free to fork your crack as much as you'd like. It's your business. Let's move on to the next one. You get, make the radius bigger, fork it up a little more, fork that crack a little harder. Next one, and the last one. Let's go ahead and check it out. There, we got it, cool, but then a crack stayed on screen right there. So in order to fix that, let's go one frame ahead right here. And with all of these selected, let's go to T for transparency. Click on the stopwatch for the opacity at 100%. Move forward one frame. Let's bring that all the way to zero to make these disappear. Now let's check out our final result without the sound effects added. And there you have it, guys. It's a pretty cool logo reveal. Good job. Keep up the hard work. And I'll see you in the next video. This has been Ricky with MotionBucks.com. Now, if you would like to learn how to make money creating these animations, then just check out my website, MotionBucks.com. Not only will I show you how to make more animations like we just did, but I'll also teach you how to sell these templates online. You can actually start getting paid for your motion graphics skills. I've got hours upon hours of tutorials ranging from complete beginners to advanced. You can start today for free. That's motionbucks.com. That's right. There's no referral link, no coupon code. Just go to motionbucks.com or click the link in the description and start today for free. I'll see you there.